if AI video is getting this good and photos are getting this good, then I think it is naive of us composers to think that AI music isn't that far behind. But what does that mean for us? What is happening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the 52 Cues podcast, your weekly insight into production and library music. Whether you're curious about the sync industry or ready to pitch to publishers, I promise you, you are at the right place. My name is Dave Croft, and it is so good to be with you today. And if you find today's video helpful, then why don't you uh, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube or a five star review in your podcast app. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? because I talk about production and library music every single week. Today's episode wouldn't be possible without the amazing support of our family and friends subscribers who not only keep the community alive and thriving, but as members, they get access to extra bonus features like live streams, workshops, Zoom feedback sessions, hundreds of hours of video archives, and opportunities to submit to real music publishers. So uh, if you're ready to take your sync career to the next level, then why don't you head over to 52qs.com and join. It's free to sign up and memberships start at around four bucks a month. So it is week nine here and just uh, checking in. It's been a really interesting week and here's why. I played this weekend, had a super busy weekend, uh, played two gigs and had a recording session on drum set. And here's the thing. I think that might have been my last drumming gig. For, for the first time since 1996, I don't have a drum set gig or a percussion gig lined up. And that feels really weird. And it's something that I've chosen to do. I think I've talked about it, about this before on the podcast where my composing work my teaching work and the, the work that I do here in the 52 Qs community has taken up so much of my bandwidth that I really don't have time for freelance work and freelance gigs anymore. And so I've, I've slowly been stepping back from my performing commitments, whether it's playing live th theater, playing church gigs, or I had one last, uh, jazz vocal act that I was playing with, shout out to Cordon and Kilgore, that I've been playing with for several years. Love the people, love the music, it's a lot of fun, but I, I realized over the last few months that I just don't have the bandwidth to do that anymore, and, and I don't think it's mine to do anymore. And this was, it was heartbreaking to kind of come to that conclusion, a little bittersweet, but also freeing for a couple of reasons. First of all, I, 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 I free my schedule up whenever I have a freelance gig com coming in. I realize that it really interrupts my routine and my flow. And so having a three-day weekend where I was on the drum stool for hours on both uh, last Friday and Saturday and then a recording session on Sunday... I just, it, it, it kind of blew up the routine that I am in, in teaching and giving feedback and writing and composing, but also that they deserve someone who is able to give them 100% all the time. And I, I came to the, the realization that, that that's not me anymore. And as sad as it is, and as bittersweet as it is, it's the right decision for both of us. They need someone who can really commit, and I am not at a place where I can do those do those types of gigs anymore. But I mean, I've been a drummer and a percussionist. I've been I started in sixth grade, and so drums and percussion have have been a nearly daily part of my life since 1985. <laughs> Started playing professionally around 1993. And then when I when I got out of college the first time, more on that, or uh, there, you can find more about that 
in the other episodes of the podcast, I've been gigging since 96. And so for the first time, I there is no gig, not even months and months away. So what I hope that means is that I'm able to kind of bring things back to center, which I believe was last year's theme, <laughs> theme of, of 2023, and really focus much more. And I knew it was right when nobody was surprised that I needed to step back from this specific gig. And while they're sad, everybody's happy for me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's surprised, but everybody's really happy and encouraging and congratulatory. So that's been my week. And my encouragement to you would be, if you find yourself in the middle of something that you know deep down isn't yours to do anymore, that it's probably okay to step away. They'll be okay. Cordon and Kilgore are going to be great. Lord knows Orlando has no shortage of drummers. They will find somebody who is probably more talented than me, certainly has more bandwidth, and, and wants to do it. And, and don't, don't they deserve that? I had, I had a similar kind of existential moment when I stepped back from teaching uh, private drum set lessons. I knew that when I... When I, I found myself secretly relieved that a student canceled a lesson, that that wasn't mine to do anymore. And the student deserves an instructor who is super passionate on whether or not they show up. Now, composing and all of that, that's totally different. That's how I know that I'm in the right place. So that was my week and uh, just a little check-in. I, I did manage to write a couple of cues last week before the whole weekend kind of blew up, and I'm still continuing to work on cues for an upcoming golf documentary switched uh, from the tension-y stuff through uplifting cues, which I think I featured last week, a more uplifting cue. And this week, this cue was written for the week nine uh, Expedition 52, because I'm still plugging along in Expedition 52. And this cue is called Patience Pending. And uh, see if you can uh, see if you can spot the meter.
That was Patience Pending. It was my week nine ex- uh, Expedition 52 submission. And in case you were wondering, it was in 5-4. Of course, it was kind of written there on the on the top. But it was in 5-4 and 1-2, 1-2, 3, 1-2, 1-2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five and, and and really interesting. Enjoyed doing that. With these projects, this is now my sixth year doing this project. I always try to have one which is in an odd meter. And so figuring out safe ways to uh safe ways to make odd meters feel normal and natural, that is one of the things I, I really enjoy doing. So, oh, and for you family and friends subscribers, if you want to see a complete breakdown of this queue, then be sure to check out the queue breakdown coming up a little bit later, later in the week. So our topic this week, we we need to talk about AI again. Now, we, we've recently had a show, and I'll put a link up here. Uh, actually, I say recently, it's been a couple of years now that we have done a show on AI and should we all be really scared and are the robots coming to take our jobs? And I still, still feel pretty optimistic about AI. However, last weekend, OpenAI, which, which makes ChatGPT, came out with their text to video engine, which gave me pause and has prompted me to feel the need to talk about this again. So what I'm going to show some videos here and keep in mind that according to, to open AI, all of the videos were generated directly by Sora. Sora is the name of their text to video engine without modification. And by by now, you've probably seen this. And there are some weirdness, like some of the walking feels weird. And and so it's not quite right. But but here's another one. And the prompt is several giant woolly mammoths approach approach, treading through a snowy meadow. Their long woolly fur lightly blows in the wind as they walk snow covered trees and Here's another one. Here's another one. Now for you podcast folks, uh, audio podcast, just just hang tight. These are all dynamically generated by AI, according to OpenAI, without modification. And these look absolutely stunning. Photorealistic close-up of two pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside a cup of coffee. Yep, that, that, that's what it would look like. More? I, I, I'm, I'm stunned into silence and we'll have links to this in the show notes. So if you want to, if you want to check, check this out for yourself, it's openaicom slash Sora, S O R A. Okay. So, so what's the point of me, of me showing, showing you this and talking about what, what rang, rang off some brand new alarm bells for me? This is really good. And Marquez Brownlee has a video that points out where we were a year ago, and it's like Will Smith eating spaghetti, and it looks, it's laughable how it looks. However, now it looks photo real. It looks amazing. And just where we've come in the last year is 
mind boggling that this video, which is a Chinese Lunar New Year celebration with a Chinese dragon, that is generated dynamically. And unless, <laughs> unless there's some smoke and mirrors going on that we don't know about, AI video has come a long way from where it was a year ago. And the photography has come a long way from where we were a year ago, which was leaps and bounds ahead of where we were two years ago. And if AI video is getting this good and photos are getting this good, then I think it is naive of us composers to think that AI music isn't that far behind. But what does that mean for us? Well, let, let me opine on which industries are being hit with current AI, video and photography. Well, first of all, the stock photo industry has absolutely cratered. Even before then, the creative writing industry has somewhat cratered. Stock photos cratered. Now, stock video industry is going to crater. Here is a litter of golden retriever puppies playing in the snow. Their heads pop out of the snow. If I was doing a dog food commercial and I needed footage of puppies frolicking, why in the world would I pay <laughs> animal wranglers and a camera crew when I could do this? If I was a realtor and I was trying to sell a home, or if I was a, a vacation website and trying to sell a home, why wouldn't I use this stock video? Well, you probably would use it. I mean, it, and it's not without its problems. Uh, there, there are some examples of, of here, here's a, a video of a guy running backwards on a treadmill. Here's a picture of wolves just spontaneously replicating. Here's a picture of a basketball kind of blowing up through a hoop and it looks weird and it's off. So it's not perfect. Uh, here's a picture of archeologists discovering a generic plastic chair, excavating and dusting it. And it's, it's not quite right, right? It's, it's really weird. <laughs> so it's not perfect, but I think it is naive of us composers to think that AI isn't coming from music. So why am I not freaking out? Well, going back to the industries that have been disrupted by AI already, first of all, writing, and what has ChatGPT done? And what's the biggest interest industry it has disrupted is, or one of the biggest, I don't have the data to support that this is the biggest, but from reading through Reddit, watching YouTube videos, I can tell you that the Fiverr people, the Upwork people, the people who got paid to write blog articles to help pad websites, that, that was a real industry. People would make money by writing blog articles for people. ChatGPT has demolished that. You go up on... Uh, Adobe stock right now, and it is flooded, and I mean flooded, with generic Adobe stock pictures. For me, using a thumbnail, if I need a background image of, of uh, some kind of, well, let's look at last week's thumbnail, that picture of, of Mozart, like sitting at a computer, that was AI. I brought it into Photoshop and did my thing with it, but it was AI generated. Once upon a time, I would have needed to 
hire an illustrator or use a stock stock picture. But no, I don't I don't need to use that anymore. And stock videos. Notice notice a, a recurring theme here. Stock. And I believe that in the music landscape, AI is going to obliterate stock music websites. That's my theory. I think AI is going to chew up. Can I get can I get the cone of safety? Cone of safety is something that uh, that I use with my students where, you know, I I need to say something that might be somewhat controversial, right? And it, it might it might be heretical or explosive or triggering to say, but I'm going to say it. AI music is going to come for the low effort art with a lowercase a first, because that's the type of music that AI can crank out. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't take creativity and it doesn't take a mastery of your tools to create a, a, a cue in an hour. But if you can crank out a cue in an hour, then I submit that it's probably not unique enough to not be replaceable by AI. Like this, uh, th this, this picture of, let's see, this picture of the, the, the Chinese dragon lunar celebration from like, if you were to stage this in a film, that would be a very expensive shot. But if you were in China at the Chinese uh, Lunar New Year celebration, that is a camera movement. There's not a lot of creative decisions that necessarily went into this shot from a creative standpoint. Let's look at one of the other ones, this, this puppy one. It is adorable. It's in slow motion. Lighting looks great. But from a creative statement, it is not the most creative idea. Puppies frolicking in snow. It's perfect for stock sites. There are always going to be pets. Pets always need food. Food always needs to be sold. Companies will always need ads. And there is something to be said about what happens to what happens to puppy wranglers. <laughs> That's somebody's job. What happens to the, the camera person looking at some of these like drone shots? What, what happens to the drone operators, the, the folks who have invested in the equipment? Well, that's, 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 a, that's a good point. And I think, I think we're going to have to get more creative. And so if you are making a career or if you are planning on making a career in production music and thinking, I'm just going to crank, crank them out as fast as I can. I don't know. I, I feel like our days, and I say our because, you know, I've, I've cranked out my fair share of, of disposable type cues, but I think our days might be numbered. I don't think there's going to be a market for low effort music replaceable music. But on the other hand, I don't see film companies, TV companies, I, I don't see CBS Sports being cool. They're, if they're looking for highlights, for music for highlights, I don't think they're going to go into to OpenAI's music generation 
and just plug something in and use it. I don't, I, maybe that's naive, but I don't think CBS is going to do that. I, I don't think anybody making a film is necessarily going to do that. Because if you get high enough up the entertainment food chain, I think there is a, a general recognition that humans make art and artists make art with a, with a lowercase a. I, I've talked about how this isn't art. But it's the difference of, you know, the artisan makes the work. And I've used like the whole time to make the donuts. Let's get up and let's, yes, I am making a dish and I might make that dish a hundred times, but it's still a dish made by a human with hands versus AI, which the equivalent would be like Soylent, <laughs> right? Right. It's just cranked out, prefab, everything in its own little box. And it might taste great for a while, but eventually it'll all taste kind of the same. So friends, I'm here to encourage you to push past low effort music and search for more creative ways to say the things that you're already saying, say the things that you need to say. Dramedy cues will be needed. Tension cues will be needed. Rock cues, polka cues, they're all going to be needed. And they're all going to be needed to be made by humans. But I, I think the days of, of just cranking them out, I don't know, I think they're coming to an end. Which begs the question, what do we do with the impending AI apocalypse? Well, I think there are a couple of ways that we can navigate this and ways that we should nav navigate it. And one of the things I've, I've been talking about already, which is emphasize the human elements. What can't be replicated by AI yet? Well, the, the biggest thing is storytelling. <laughs> AI really can't communicate human emotion, storytelling. They really can't do that. The voice, recorded elements, the element of randomness, that, that a human brings to, to, to the table, whether it's a shaker, whether it's lyrics, or whether it's playing guitar. I think it'll improve, but I mean, Sora has gone a long way to bridging the uncanny valley, but there are tells still. But I think that's still going to be a premium for us. Another way to, to help navigate this is always learning, always being aware, being prepared to adapt, and using AI to enhance your creativity. Using AI to, to help bring to the surface ideas, creative, uh, creative ideas that otherwise would just take longer. For example, the outline for today's episode was generated with the help of ChatGPT. And so the skill becomes in the prompts, in the question, in the pairing, in the curation of the information. Never have I, or never will I say, give me an article on PROs. And then just, here it is, copy paste. Nope, I think it's irresponsible. Well, beyond all that, it's lazy. But I can talk about PROs, I can research PROs, and then use a tool like GPT to help me curate that information. The thumbnails on the podcast. If you don't see me like making a face in the thumbnail, chances are it was with some help of some AI, then brought into Photoshop and edited and creatively worked with. But we can't be afraid of the tools. I think if we resist the tools and are afraid of the tools, then we're no different than like John Philip Sousa being afraid of the player piano or whatever. You're just, you're just at some point, you're 
kind of spitting into the wind and the wind will win. <laughs> right? So understanding it, learning it, don't be afraid of it, studying it and collaborating with it. How can we bring AI alongside into our creative in, into our creative voice? Now, the music tools that I've heard so far in AI sound terrible. They're not good. But if Sora, the video, can get this good in one year, then I imagine the music is not far behind. So finding a tool, if I need stutter trap hats, for example, and if I can get AI-generated stutter hats, would I use those over Splice? Is Splice the real victim of the AI apocalypse? Not as composers, no, but Splice, because Splice is to the composing industry as iStock Photo or Getty Images is to the visual industry, really. Interestingly enough, I read an article yesterday <laughs> where the company that owns Tumblr and WordPress.com has licensed or sold their data to MidJourney, which is one of OpenAI's competitors. And it's totally legal, totally in the terms of service. If you've uploaded and if you have photos up on Tumblr, which was free, remember, Remember, if, if anything is free, the chances are you are the product. Mm. <laughs> that right there is why 52Qs got off Facebook. Anyway, but Tumblr, the company that owns Tumblr, licensed its entire photo catalog that users uploaded. And if you look at all the fine print on Tumblr, you will see that they can do this to train Midjourney. Any blog or anything that was ever posted up on WordPress.com, not using WordPress the software, but hosted for free over at WordPress.com is now in the hands of the language learning models. So if you're sitting here right now and you have a Tumblr and you're like, I don't want that, and you should consider taking things off Tumblr. So it's coming. We have to learn how to collaborate with it. Low effort music is not going to hack it anymore. Putting our hands on an instrument, recording something, getting in there. I, I know it's inconvenient. Maybe I need to have another, another inconvenient truths of, of production music, but you got, you got to learn how to, how to maybe make some custom synth patches. You've got to learn how to, uh, how to run a mic, how to, how to record whatever you can put your hands on to record, because these elements, these random organic intangibles are going to be what helps separate our music from the low effort AI generated stuff. But I'm not afraid. This isn't a doom and gloom. I believe that, that we, there will always be jobs for composers, for human composers but we have to raise our own level. And I am here collectively as one of the representatives on YouTube of the production music industry saying that we have to get better. We have to get better. One cool thing is I have seen some libraries start to say and actually advertise no AI elements. It's, this, this is all music made by humans. And AI has come up in the Production Music Association meetings that we that we have once a month or so. AI comes up. Pond5, a few, a few months ago, released their catalog to one of the AI companies. So if you have music up on the Pond5, <laughs> then you are help, helping to train AI which will eventually take the play. It's going to displace Pond5. It's so short-sighted, but oh well. All right? So I think that AI can help 
help our creative process. I think it can help do things for us, like programming, specific like stutter hats, which are, are meticulous to program. That's just an example. Much like I used AI to help organize my bullet points for this very episode, I think that can translate to, to music and co composition. There are ethical considerations that we have to take into account and what the future landscape looks like and how do you get paid and who gets paid and should people get paid for having their data used to support other artistic output? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But at the end of the day, we should be cautiously optimistic. We should remain, op remain open-minded and committing ourselves to being better. That's, that's, that's all I wanted to say about AI. But these, these videos, these videos are, are staggering. They're, they're amazing. And, and I can't, I can't make my brain see these as anything but photo real. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, I'm here for it. Uh, and uh, I'd love to know what you think. Why don't you let me know in the comments below, is uh, AI here to uh, completely ruin the industry or is AI here to help creative people be even more creative and find more outlets? I would love to hear from you. Why don't you let me know in the comments below? I do read all of those. So thank you for joining me today. And again, a huge word of thanks to the family, friends, and neighbor subscribers of 52Qs who pay their actual real life money to keep all of this happening. You'll notice you didn't hear any embedded ads for mattresses or meal plans or earbuds or plugins. And the reason that is, is because of people just like you. So if you would like to help support 52Qs along with getting all of those extra bonus perks, then head over to 52Qs.com. It is free to join and subscriber packages start at around four bucks a month. But that is going to do it for me this week. You definitely want to tune in next week for a special live episode Thursday, uh, next Thursday at 4 p.m., where we will be listening to the submissions from this quarter's Composer Quest. This quarter's Composer Quest is called Symbol Slice 2024, and folks over in the 52Qs community had access to five symbol samples that I recorded, and uh, well, they might be coming out at some point, um, that I recorded, and uh, we're going to be listening to and, and judging them, and you get to vote on the most creative, the most outside the box, uh, usage of the samples. And so join us for a special live podcast recording that is next Thursday. The actual date, I can tell you the date is March 7th. And you want to definitely want to jo join live because there's going to be some special incentives, which may or may not involve symbol samples. Yes, it's happening for you folks who have been hearing about this for, for almost two years. It's happening. It's happening. But I definitely want to join in next week. And so I hope that your week nine has been good. And I know that you're going to have a good week 10. How do I know that, friends? Because I know, trust, and believe that the universe has amazing plans just for you. Until next time, peace. The 52 Cues podcast is copyright 2024, 818 Studios, all rights reserved. The music played on the podcast is copyright of their respective owners and is used with permission and for educational purposes only. For more information, including joining the community or becoming a member subscriber of 52 Cues, head over to 52Qs.com.